You know, I don't know if it's going to come from those of you that are watching this video, people that follow the channel on social media, from the WWE. I don't know, and frankly, I don't really care. I just need your help here. I need help understanding what the whole point of this Roman Reigns storyline is right now. Like, I get it. You're trying to do some type of angle to try and get some type of sympathy on him. You know, dude just recently beat leukemia again. Like, you would think, in theory, that should be enough to get him a relative level of relatability. A relative level of likability. And frankly, a relevant relative level of popularity, of audience engagement. You would think. You would think. But while those types of things would seem to get you a lot of sympathy, the WWE, of course, just can't help themselves. And this is the path that they've went down. Now, initially, you, know, you could sit there and say, oh, Roman Reigns had somebody try to push something over on him, try to kill him backstage, and as bad and crappy as that looked, you know, like, who did it? Was Samoa Joe behind it? And then you come back a little later, and Roman Reigns is getting into the car, Samoa Joe's chasing him down, and here comes a car, <laughs> smack dab into the side of his car, and you're like, oh, it wasn't Samoa Joe. So who was it? And it's worth it just for thinking about the possibilities of it was Jimmy or Jay Uso driving drunk that hit him, or it was Rikishi saying, he did it for Jimmy, he did it for Jay, he did it for The Rock, he did it, he did it. Yeah, like, there's a little bit of an appeal and an entertainment factor, you know, fantasizing and entertaining the thoughts of things like that. But quickly, it becomes apparent that the WWE has come up with an idea or a concept and did not think it all the way through, which is pretty standard operating procedure for this company at this time and has been for a number of years now. And I think everybody acknowledges that, don't they? Right? Because you've now gotten to the point where it feels like this thing has jumped the shark several times. Here are some examples of what I mean. Frankly, this is really the only example that you need. We just got done with SummerSlam a couple of weeks ago in August. Your big show of the summer. And one of your most featured names over the past half decade plus in the company is Roman Reigns. And he's apparently healthy enough to wrestle. And you don't have him booked on the card at all. Imagine, during other eras of the company's history, having a Hulk Hogan healthy and present and not booking him on SummerSlam. You know, even though he wasn't off doing movies or he wasn't hurt or anything like that. Imagine having Austin and The Rock and not booking them on SummerSlam, even though they were healthy and ready to roll. Imagine them not booking John Cena on a SummerSlam, even though he was healthy and present and ready to roll. Is that anything that you could ever imagine or envision the WWE doing? No. Because that would be dumb. It's supposed to be your biggest show of the summer. Your biggest name should be in your biggest matches. I mean, it just makes sense, doesn't it? But it's like the WWE came up with this germ of an idea and now has written themselves into a corner and they really don't know where the hell to go with all of this. Like, strike one is not having Roman Reigns wrestle at all at WrestleMania. Strike two is having a guy like Buddy Murphy be involved, even though you didn't intend for him to be there, apparently. He just happened to be there. So the fans reacted via social media, so you went with it. So you had him wrestle a super competitive match with Roman Reigns to then the next week beat, beat a different guy, another former multiple-time world champion in Daniel Bryan, to then sit there and jot out in the opening round of the stupid King of the Ring tournament to Ali of all damn people. Like, clearly didn't have this thought out long term. But now you're getting to the point of Buddy Murphy saying it's Rowan that drove the car and it's Rowan that drove the car to have the big reveal that it wasn't Rowan. It was some guy that looks like Rowan's doppelganger short daddy. To where now 
they're showing footage and it's Rowan and and a uh, payoff here is gonna be a match. I didn't watch SmackDown Tuesday, I'm just going off of what I read. You're booking Roman. Did I see this right? Roman versus Rowan at Clash of Champions? Like this is serious and this is a thing. Now look, whether you like Roman Reigns or not is your business. I do not care. Fine, whatever. But there is an element of you have invested so much into an individual, into a character, that you must try to get the maximum return on investment out of that. As much as I think a lot of us think Seth Rollins' character is boring as bricks now and he's been crappy for quite a while, the fact of the matter is the company has spent as much energy and effort forcing him as they have Roman over the past four or five years. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Don't deny it. Your boy is getting forced just like Roman's getting forced. But they have to put him in a certain position in order to justify all the previous investment they put into him to get a maximum return on that investment. We might not like it, but from that standpoint, and only that standpoint, it kind of sort of makes sense. But whereas you've got Seth Rollins defending both his tag team championship and his universal championship at Clash of the Champions, you got Roman Reigns wrestling Eric freaking Rowan? Huh? Huh? Not even Daniel Bryan at this point. Like, what's the point of doing that match? So he maybe beats Rowan, and then maybe somebody else, uh, Harper or somebody else is freaking behind this or involved in it or something entirely different. Like, at this point in time, it feels like this has been one ginormous exercise of wasting everybody's damn time for the past two months or so just to delay an actual match between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. And look, it's okay to slowly build to something. It is okay to not always have to die face first like you would a pussy. But at some point in time, you get to a point where you say, what is the point? Why are we continuing to stretch this out? What's the payoff here? What's the real point of all of this? Roman isn't made better by the storyline. If anything, he's made worse. Daniel Bryan, by association, is not made any better by the storyline. He is made worse. People have thrown their hands up at it. And they think this is stupid, rightfully so. And it's still not even over yet. And that whole notion of you gotta wait to see how it plays out before you pass judgment, bullshit. How many times you read a book, if any of you read a book, and to be fair, I always skimmed and then looked for Cliff Notes online back in school, but a long time ago. But imagine getting ready to read a 300 page book and you're about 40 pages in and you're like, this book is boring me to tears. Are you really going to be expected to read the other 260 nam damn pages just to see how it plays out? No. If you're not interested at that point, why continue to go down the path? If you turn on a TV show that's an hour long and you're five, ten minutes in, you're like, oh, this looks stupid. Do you really need to sit there and watch the other 50 minutes to see how it plays out? Hell no! You're going to change the damn channel as you should, as is your right to do so. And in fact, it makes sense. Why spend another 50 minutes trying to force yourself to like something and if you don't like it initially, just stop, right? Sensible enough. But we haven't even gotten to the point here with this story that's been going on. What is it for now? For two months? What is the point here? Like, did you ever really truly get payoff between Roman and Samoa Joe? No, you kind of just went away from that to now he's involved in this long-term angle involving Daniel Bryan that doesn't really have a satisfying payoff in sight. Unless you are going to do something incredibly different here or think of something really outside of the box it is time to wrap this joker up classify it as yet another great vince and wwe creative hiccup and throw it in the trash can of history because at this point in time by continuing to persist on this week in and week out only makes us care less about the story and it, as a result by association care less for the people involved in it. Now, to the best of my knowledge, 
There's nothing wrong with Roman. We've seen him wrestle. We've seen Daniel Bryan wrestle. We've now gotten to the point. Can we just get to the point where Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns freaking wrestle so that way we can finish this off and move the hell on? Somebody please help me. What's the point here? And more importantly, why should I care? And why does it persist to go on?